So we are going to prove that the tensor product is unique. This video is going to use the language of vector spaces, but the same reasoning also applies to tensor products of modules over a commutative ring. So first of all, let's talk about what the tensor product of two vector spaces is. When we talk about the tensor product of vector spaces V and W, we're really talking about two things. The first is a vector space T, and the second is a function tau. So tau is a bilinear map from V cross W into the tensor product T. If you're thinking about the conventional way we denote the tensor product, so if we're looking at a map from V cross W into the tensor product V tensor W, the map tau is given by tau of V comma W equals V tensor W. So it's the map that sends every ordered pair into the associated pure tensor. But the idea is we can define the tensor products more abstractly. We don't necessarily need to refer to things like pure tensors or the V tensor W idea. And the tensor product V tensor W along with this bilinear map tau satisfies something called the universal property of the tensor product, which says that for every bilinear map G from V cross W into some other vector space U, there exists a unique linear map F from the tensor product into U such that F composed with tau equals G. Now, here's the thing. In this universal property statement, I didn't write V tensor W like I did over here. Instead, I just wrote T. And the reason for that is this universal property is some condition that we could apply to any vector space along with an associated map tau. So it's possible that we could have some vector space other than the tensor product that also satisfies this universal property if we pair it with the right map. So the goal of this video is to prove that the tensor product is the only vector space that satisfies this universal property. Or in other words, there is a unique vector space satisfying this property. And the way that we'll do that is by supposing that we have two different vector spaces, T and T prime, that satisfy this universal property. And we will show that these two must be isomorphic, meaning they are essentially the same vector space. Now, in order to talk about the universal property for a vector space T, we need to have an associated map tau. So our first quote unquote tensor product T here is going to have an associated map tau. And the second one T prime is going to have a map tau prime. So we have these two vector spaces with their maps. We're going to suppose that both of these satisfy the universal property with V and W. And our goal is to show that T is isomorphic to T prime using the universal property. Now to make the universal property a bit easier to visualize, I'm going to write it in a diagram over here. So we have our Cartesian product V cross U, and then we have a bilinear map G that goes from that Cartesian product to some other vector space. And the universal property also talks about the tensor product T over here. And we have a bilinear map tau that goes from the Cartesian product into the tensor product. Now the universal property says that anytime we have a bilinear map G here, there exists a unique linear map from T to U, and it's called F. And the universal property says that F composed with tau equals G. So in other words, either path that we take in this diagram from V cross W to U is going to give us the same function. So our goal is to get some results that relate the tensor product T to the other tensor product T prime. So how can we use this universal property to sort of put T and T prime together? Well, the one place that we are allowed to choose something in this universal property diagram is the map G and the vector space U because V cross W is fixed. We know we're looking at the tensor product T over here, but we can pick the vector space down here and the map. So what I'm going to put here, instead of some arbitrary vector space U, is the other tensor product T prime. And the bilinear map that goes here is going to be tau prime. So the universal property says that because this is a bilinear map, there exists a unique linear map F right here, such that F composed with tau equals tau prime. So this is our first result. Now, we can do the same thing, but we switch T and T prime. 
So down here, I've written the same diagram as up here, but I've switched t with t prime everywhere. So if we use the universal property in this case, we're saying, OK, there's a bilinear map tau from v cross w to t. Therefore, by the universal property, there exists a unique linear map from t prime to t, such that f prime composed with tau prime equals tau. So notice that these two equations are the same, except we're switching tau prime with tau, and now we have a different function f prime in the second case. So we can put these two equations together. If we have f composed with tau equals tau prime, we have this tau in the equation here, but we have an equation for tau down here as well. So we can take this expression and substitute it in for tau in the equation up here. So f composed with tau equals tau prime, but tau is this thing down here. So f composed with f prime composed with tau prime equals tau prime. So remember that our goal is to prove that the vector spaces t and t prime are isomorphic. And the standard way to prove that two vector spaces are isomorphic is to construct an isomorphism. An isomorphism is a linear map between the vector spaces that has an inverse, which is also a linear map. Notice right here that we have a function f that is a linear map from t to t prime. So if f has an inverse, then we're done, because we have a linear map with an inverse. So right now, our goal is basically to prove that this map f right here, this linear map, has an inverse. What it means to have an inverse, let's say the inverse is g, is that there is this map g from t prime back to t, such that f composed with g is the identity on t prime, and g composed with f is the identity on t. So we need a function g that behaves like this. Now let's take a look at this equation down here. f composed with f prime composed with tau prime equals tau prime. If we didn't have this tau prime at the end here, this equation would look like f composed with f prime equals the identity. So this equation sort of suggests that f prime is going to be our inverse function to f. And in fact, we got this equation by starting with f composed with tau equals tau prime, and then substituting the second equation in for tau. If we do the same thing in the other direction, starting with this bottom equation, what we get is f prime composed with f composed with tau equals tau. So this second equation starts to suggest that f prime composed with f is also the identity. So we're getting both sides of the inverse here. But of course, these equations aren't enough for us to prove that f composed with f prime is the identity. But maybe we can use these equations to get to where we need. So we're at a point where we have a linear map f from t to t prime that we think might be an isomorphism. And we have these two equations that start to suggest that our other function f prime would be the inverse to f. But these equations aren't enough, so we need to look for more information. In order to get more information, somehow we're going to need to apply the universal property again. We already apply the universal property to t and t prime, and then the reverse. So how are we going to get more information? Well, so far we've applied the universal property where the tensor product here and the vector space here are different. So we would put t on top and t prime on bottom, or in the other case, we put t prime on the top and t on the bottom. But what if we look at the universal property where both of the vector spaces are the same? So what if we put t on the top and on the bottom? So we're looking at tau here and tau here. What does the universal property tell us in that case? Well, it says, OK, we have a bilinear map tau from v cross w to t. Therefore, there exists a unique linear map from t to t such that this map composed with tau equals tau. OK, so what map is there such that the map composed with tau equals tau? Well, there's one easy answer, which is the identity on t. So the identity is the function that sends every element to itself, which means basically we're not doing anything when we apply the identity function. So of course, the identity composed with tau 
is the same as just tau by itself. Now here's the thing. We have this first function, the identity on t, such that it composed with tau equals tau. But there's another function where when we compose it with tau, it equals tau. And that's this function right here, f prime composed with f. So we have another function here that satisfies the same equation, f prime composed with f composed with tau equals tau. But that's where the universal property comes in. Because the universal property does not just tell us that there exists a linear map. It says that there exists a unique linear map. There is exactly one map from t to t such that that map composed with tau equals tau. So the universal property says that there's only one linear map that can go here. But we have two linear maps that can go there. So what does that mean? It means that these two maps have to be the same. F prime composed with F has to equal the identity on T. And we can make the exact same argument if we switch T and T prime in this diagram, and that will give us F composed with F prime equals the identity on T prime. And this is what we need for F prime to be the inverse to F. So we found that F is a linear map from T to T prime with a two-sided inverse F prime that is also a linear map. Therefore, t and t prime are isomorphic, which means that the tensor product is unique. So that's how we prove that there is only one vector space satisfying the universal property of the tensor product.